Hello again. This week we shall mostly be re-seeing the good, the bad and the ugly from a fairly bonkers week. Some of the bad Pat dealt with on Match Night Live in midweek. Some of the ugly, Gary Cahill coming soon. Let's start with some good though, Pat. Eden Hazard on the big stage again, brilliant away at Atletico and two goals here against Roma. Yeah, and we really needed them. Sometimes you don't have to play your very best, but if you come up with those moments at the right time, and he kept on working really hard with Morata, but it wasn't quite working. And then he gets a deflected ball into him, scores a goal and the header. was good enough to be Morata himself, so that'll give him a lift. Confidence will be absolutely bursting after that one. And he wants to score more goals in the Champions League. And people talk about top, top players doing it on the top, top stage. Mm -hmm. He's wanting to get into that bracket, you know, in that Messi, Ronaldo, Neymar bracket. I think Are we seeing the start of him doing that? Oddly, a lot of other people want to see him in that bracket. I think he just likes cruising along, scoring goals and enjoying his football and loving playing football. Um, and generally, if he's enjoying it and loving it, he's playing well anyway. So he gets to that upper level and those two goals will definitely help. Another player who likes a big stage, David Luiz. You might remember en route to winning the Europa League four years ago against Basel. He did this. And then on Wednesday, he opened the scoring against Roma with a very similar goal, Pat. Yeah, but do you notice one thing about it? It's a different foot. He can do it with his right foot and his left foot. That's absolutely fantastic. Now, he actually had a brilliant first half. His tackling was good. So the technical side of that area in the midfield, he did really, really well. Wonderful finish. Let's see what the Mumbai Supporters Club made of it. <laughs> Now, the reason our cameras are out there is because the Premier League trophy is on tour in Asia at the moment and as part of the travelling Chelsea contingent, Torre Andre Flo, ambassador, coach and footballer supreme, has been putting on a session himself. Have a look at this. Yeah, this afternoon, myself and the uh, Chelsea Foundation have had um, a couple of training sessions here at the community centre. Uh, here with a little playground we've been uh, having a couple of sessions for uh, for the boys and the girls and it's been great fun and what has struck me here is that they all seem very happy uh, and glad that we, we're here one final thing from the Roma game Gary Cahill I promised you some ugly um, Pat well I, you do what you can I, but even yeah, so do you know what it doesn't matter and the big thing about Gary Cahill he doesn't know how daft he looks at this point in time he's just getting on with the game and everyone's going, eh? wonder what he thought about it when you looked at it afterwards. Captain, explain yourself. Yeah, it's not a good look, was it? <laughs> it wasn't a good look. Uh, I think the Vizio stitched me up with that one, but uh, no, I've had a little blow in, I think it was just caught. It wasn't intentional, I don't think, but his arms come across and I opened my chin up, so a few stitches and I've had worse, it'd be all right. Right, let's go to Cobham now, and a couple of goalkeepers helped us out, taking us right into the heart of a training session. Hello, I'm Marcin Bulka. I'm Thibaut, and welcome to goalkeeper training. Oh. I had to touch. I no, I don't. I go, I go. I go, no, I I'm done. You see my face like this? I think my nose blocked the viewer. I am in good shape today, eh? Nothing wrong at all with having a big nose, no. eh, Pat? No. <laughs> OK, also from Cobham, Danny Drinkwater back in training. This has been such a pain, Pat, because how much would he have had at game time in the last couple know, of weeks? He'd have played loads, wouldn't well, he? He knew when he came to this club it was going to be tough to get a game. You've got Kante, you've got mm. Fabri Gas, you've got Bakayoko, you can, you've actually got David Luiz, you can walk in there. They've got a whole bunch of players. And this was his chance because a lot of them have had injuries, etc., and with a whole bunch of games. And of course, Danny, what happens? He gets injured. It's a nightmare. It is a player's ultimate nightmare. Yeah, to sign for a club and pick up a calf injury straight away. Very frustrating indeed. Hopefully, we'll be seeing Danny soon. OK, now it's time for. Oh, I can't remember. It's been a while. Game of Loans. Three goals to tell you about. One scored by Jao Rodriguez for Tampico Madero, yes, them, in Mexico. Wham bam, Tammy Abraham a little closer to home. Another two goals for him against Huddersfield. And well done, Jamal Blackman, who's getting a great run at Sheffield United, doing so well in the championship. Another clean sheet for him.
On the subject of youngsters, England's under-17s going brilliantly in the World Cup out in India. Through to the quarterfinals, they're playing the USA later today. And in the last round, they beat Japan on penalties. Four Chelsea players started that game with another Conor Gallagher on the bench. Mark Gurhey, John Panzo, George McEachran and Callum Hudson-Odoi, who scored his penalty in the shootout, by the way. Although, that said, the PL2 team on Friday night and the UEFA Youth League team on Wednesday afternoon certainly missed some of those boys. A couple of defeats there for Joe Edwards and his team. Now, trivia. We asked you last week, who else scored their first Chelsea goal in a game that Didier Drogba scored a header against Palace in? The answer was Thiago. The first three to answer correctly were Parth Gupta, Cameron Morgan and Noah Robson, who has been a successful answeree on this show before. So I think Noah Robson is, uh, is paying a lot of attention. Well done him. Good work, you three. The prize is Gary Cahill's used head nappy. And Pat has this week's trivia question. Yeah, interesting one this week because uh, I had thought three players who played for Chelsea, pretty well known as well, who have actually managed at Watford. So uh, get your thinking caps on, uh, send it to the information down below, yes. Um, could you have got that one? Maybe one I or two so. of them, but it's a tough question. Really. One of them's trickier than the other two, there's your clue. Okay, so let's talk about Watford. They're fourth. They've been very good. They score lots of late goals. They've only lost one game where you saw uh, they played actually yeah. quite well but got stuffed by City. <laughs> this was supposed to be an easy October. Uh, this is not going to be an easy game. No, uh, right at this moment in time, usually the phrase is, we are in a tough moment, a difficult moment. And Watford, to be honest, is one of the last teams you want to see just now. They're playing with lots of confidence mm. just now and they're up in the league table really high up. And to be honest, I have to tell you, I think they deserve to be there. Mm. It's going to be a tough game out here the weekend. Uh, they've got a good manager, they are by all accounts super, super fit and of course they've had the full week to prepare so could be tricky, they also do score a lot of late goals, six points they've nicked in stoppage time already this season which would suggest that they are very fit indeed. Just a little bit of fun from the archives in terms of Watford, we have this Willian when Watford came and they're a championship side and in fact they were frustrating that day until Willian came off the bench and did that and Kurt Zuma got a goal that day in the cup and also uh, more recently of course in May of this year Watford came the game after the Hawthorns and provided the guard of honour Pat ridiculous game 4-3 which is the sort of thing that happens when a side has just won the title exactly you turn off slightly you don't defend the same way but there's another reason why we've got to be on our game. They're looking for retribution, as well as the fact that they're playing well this season. They are playing well, and what a scalp it would be to beat the champions, but it's not going to happen. I'll tell you why, because Eden Hazard's going to score in a Chelsea win. That is the bet from our betting partner, William Hill, this week. Enhanced odds was 6-5, to five, now 6-4. to four. Watford, bring them on. It's time to end this sloppy little run. See you next week.